Hello watch enthusiasts! Now the luxury wristwatch industry is often regarded as a very slow moving animal and something of an archaic industry. Because it's an industry which does, uh, that does tend to look to its past, to its history and to what's already been done for inspiration. One simply has to look at all the vintage styled watches on the market at the moment. However, I think it would be a gross overstatement to say that this is the, the entirety of the industry. Because in this video I'd like to speak about watches which may well be celebrated as luxury watches of the future. These are luxury watches in terms of their price, but also in terms of really looking to new means of telling the time, but also in terms of new ways of innovating with their movements, their cases, and their general builds to, to use uh, new technologies, and to move themselves in a direction which is very different to that of the general industry, and which I find rather fascinating. And so unlike a lot of my videos, this isn't a buying guide so much as talking about a few interested, interesting watches, which I think offer an enormous amount in terms of the, the general importance of the industry, and also in terms of what we understand as being the industry, as well as just offering some really gorgeous and remarkable technology. With that in mind, it seems strange to start with FP Journ, because FP Journ is a brand which was founded by François Journ in 1999. However, Journ was, was inspired and indeed uh, trained and, and learnt the art of watchmaking from the, the work of Breguet, for example, and indeed from those, uh, those, those horologists of the 18th century. And so it does seem surprising that I'm talking about his watches in a video that's so um, so modern in terms of what it's looking towards. However, his, his approach to watchmaking is quite remarkable, and the brand follows a really wonderful route in terms of what they make. Because their work is always highly creative and very interesting in terms of being a variation, whilst taking inspiration from the past on a style very much of its own. And this piece, which is the Illigant 48mm Titanium, is no exception. Interestingly, this piece is a quartz watch. And normally that's at odds with this uh, very high-end luxury timepiece concept. However, in my eyes, there's certainly room for this on the market, and do allow me to persuade you of this. Because this is a piece which comes in titanium at 48mm from lug to lug, 40mm from side to side, and only 7.95mm thick. Now, the watch itself is rather a complex form, and it features a case which is described as a flat tortoise style of case, so a flat tortoise. However, in the design of this watch, I see a great deal of influences, but I love the fact that they've kept with a somewhat old-fashioned style of having that, um, that cut-off oval, if you will, for the form of the case, with those slight curves up to the lugs, and that separate bezel which is screwed down, which adds a slightly more technical side to the design of this watch, and prevents it from looking a little bit too delicate. This influence is also echoed in the rest of the case shape, because the back of the watch is very heavily sculpted and curved to allow it to sit very comfortably on the wrist, whilst that, uh, that, that, that uh, strap, which is in rubber as you can see, and comes in a, a rainbow of different colours, allows the watch to have a slightly more sporty style, which I think otherwise this watch would lose. Of course the watch does have a very strong element, which is very classical, and this is seen mostly in the dial and the crown. And the crown is a screw-down crown, but still retains a very classical style, with that typical F. Bijon braid of metal around its edge, which gives both a good grip on the crown, but also gives it a very aesthetic um, and, uh, and very carefully considered form. Then of course there's the dial, which is beautifully framed underneath that sapphire crystal, but of course is circular and resembles that of a pocket watch. It's also surrounded by that metal section, which gives it a certain context and allows it to look a little bit more contemporary. But the dial itself gives this fantastic appearance, because it is actually a, a, a sapphire, a luminescent sapphire dial. And what this allows the, the watch to do is glow extremely intensely in the dark, which, unlike a lot of other watches, doesn't glow from the hands, but rather from the dial itself, which gives you a sort of a shadow which is extremely legible and very, very practical. However, the little window just past four o'clock would suggest there's a little bit more to this watch than meets the eye. And from the perspective of the dial, this means quite a lot, because what that, that little window is is a sensor which senses whether the, uh, the watch is being moved. And this is crucial because due to the fact that this movement is quartz, when you put the watch down for more than half an hour and it doesn't move, the hands stop moving altogether. And what this means is that the watch is able to save battery to quite a remarkable level. Now, during standard use, this watch will run for 8-10 years. However, if you're, uh, you're, you, you, turn, you choose to put the watch down or put it away, you can make the watch last up to 18 years. And as soon as you put the watch back on or it senses any sort of movement, the hands will automatically go back to their, their, their correct position, because the movement will keep on uh, telling the time, even when the hands aren't, aren't showing it. And interestingly, the hands will move either way, so they will actually move backwards if they have to, to move the shortest possible distance to the correct time. And this is all courtesy of the Calibre 1210, which is a truly incredible quartz movement, because it's been made to every standard of a mechanical watch, it simply uses quartz technology. 
And so that means this watch is still an 18 joule movement, despite the fact that it is quartz, not a mechanical watch. And likewise, if you look through the exhibition case back, you'll see the watch is beautifully decorated. And this is seen around the back of the watch, but also on the movement itself, where there's decoration over the, um, the battery. And also all of the, the circuitry, which you see in black and gold, has been sculpted and, and, and uh, changed to appear aesthetically pleasing. This is especially visible in the little, uh, the little golden heart you see on the one side of the movement, which really is demonstrative of the care that F.P. Jean have taken here. And so with its beautiful titanium case, it's extremely characterful and very, very well designed dial, with craftsmanship which is truly dripping from this watch, even in the movement which, despite being quartz, is made with red gold bridges, and with the most incredible care towards the, the accuracy and also the functionality of the movement. Despite the fact that this watch is 11,500 Swiss francs, I think it's a remarkable proposition, and a very interesting one in terms of, um, of starting this video on the subject of luxury watches which really do look to the future. The second watch I'd like to speak about takes the idea of quartz and turns it on its head. Because this isn't a quartz watch by any stretch, and uh, I really wouldn't want people to imagine that. Because I speak about Grand Seiko a great deal, and so it'll come as no surprise in this video, despite the fact that I was speaking about a great deal of more obscure watches, this watch is the Grand Seiko Spring Drive. And this is very much a piece which I chose to have in this video, because in terms of its case and its, um, its, its conceived nature, it follows the lines of Grand Seiko's history to a degree, but it executes it in a completely modern way, and without holding on to the past in any way, shape or form, with quality which is truly legendary, and a movement which is even more so. Of course, Seiko is often associated with their lower-end watches, but since the 1960s, Seiko have been producing some truly incredible watches, which compete extremely well with their Swiss counterparts, with regards to being extremely high-beat movements, and also having a build quality and a general aesthetic, which is both unmistakable, but also highly attractive. And this watch is no exception, because it comes of course in black or in white, I've put the references on the screen as well, if you'd like to research them. But they both come in these large 46.4mm by 16.2mm ceramic cases. And this is, uh, is zirconium dioxide, so zirconia ceramic, which is seven times harder than, uh, than steel, which is extremely useful to keep scratches at bay, whilst the bezel is also matching in its, uh, its black ceramic. And so this makes the watch a far more, uh, more, more reasonable proposition in terms of being a robust watch for someone who wants something to wear every day. However, I appreciate the fact that uh, Grand Seiko have taken the care to make the crown, the crown guards and the pushers uh, titanium, because of course ceramic is very brittle, so if these parts, which are quite small and, um, and delicate, were to be made out of, um, out of ceramic, one would have the risk of shattering them if there was a very large shock. Likewise, they've taken real care with the bracelet, so the outer links, which bear the load of the watch, are in titanium, whilst the central links are ceramic, which means that you won't scratch them if you run your, your, uh, your wrist across a table. Of course, this aesthetic may not be for everyone, because they are quite busy, and they aren't the most elegant watches in the world. But I must say, bearing in mind the quality of the materials, and just how beautifully every surface of the watch has been finished, from the brushed surfaces to the beautiful Zeratsu polished areas on the titanium to the polished areas of ceramic, one has a really gorgeous product in terms of its material beauty. But I really would compare these watches to Rolex Daytonas in terms of these being the Rolex Daytonas of the future, as robust, all-purpose chronographs. And of course this starts with the case, because one has 100 meter water resistance, so you can swim with the watch very comfortably with the exception of scuba diving, and you'll have no problems. Likewise one has a wonderful double domed and double anti-reflective anti coated sapphire crystal, which gives you a fantastic view of the dial irrespective of the angle at which you look at the watch, which is remarkably useful especially if you're wearing the watch in bright sunlight. Of course this rather space age watch also has luminescent hands and of course indices, which feature Seiko's proprietary Lumabrite, which gives a fantastic glow in the dark. But of course the hands and the indices are beautiful in their own right, being brushed and polished to real perfection, with sharp edges and, and a care and a symmetry in, in their, their design and their build, which is quite remarkable and, uh, and is something to really be appreciated, because Seiko are world renowned for being able to do this. But of course then there are the complications, because this is a watch which is in many ways quite, uh, quite deceptive. Because whilst the dial looks very busy in terms of what it's displaying, the way it does so with a movement which is truly advanced is really amazing. Because in terms of functionality, the watch shows that the, the standard time, the date, also has a GMT hand, and of course has that chronograph in addition to a power reserve indicator. And all of this is run via a movement which has become rather legendary, which is the Grand Seiko 9R86, which is of course a spring drive movement. And spring drive is a technology which for a long time was very misunderstood as a result of the fact that it's something rather unorthodox. Because what it does is it balances the worlds of quartz 
and mechanical movements into a package which offers really the best of both worlds. Because in these movements, on the one hand, one sees the accuracy of quartz, with the beauty and the charm, and of course the benefits of a mechanical movement. Now this works by having, a, in this case, an automatic uh, winding rotor, which winds the spring in the watch, which then, uh, then um, uh, releases its energy, but rather than going through a standard escapement with a pallet fork and a pallet wheel, it instead uses a, uh, effectively a quartz oscillator. And so with the quartz oscillator giving effectively the rate at which the watch should run, it then applies a brake to slow the run of the second hand, and indeed slow the, the run of the rest of the hands to the correct rate. And this is extremely stable, but also gives immense accuracy, and so makes these watches really very, very suitable, especially for the role of being a chronograph, because due to the fact that there's no locking and unlocking, as would be the case with a normal escapement, it gives a perfectly smooth run to the second hand, and so as a result is perfect for a chronograph where you want to be able to see the exact point between the seconds at which you've stopped it. And so what this yields is an accuracy of about one second a day, which is quite remarkable, and of course is in addition to the fact that this watch has a column wheel chronograph, and of course has the, has the, the additional help of an anti-magnetic setup, and 72 hours of power reserve. And so I think this is a quite remarkable timepiece, which really sets a standard for what, a, what an automatic chronograph should be. And of course it's not a standard or an orthodox chronograph in the traditional sense, but rather it does offer an incredible amount and presents a future for watchmaking which offers uh, some of the benefits of quartz, but with the charm of mechanical. If ever asked how a mechanical watch shows the time, then the usual answer would be hands, or upon a few occasions, uh, perhaps through discs or through a digital display, via those, uh, those discs with numbers. But very rarely would the answer be through oil. However, this is the case with the Ressence Type 5. And Ressence is a Belgian company founded in 2010, but uh, now in fact has an office in Geneva. And it's a very interesting concept in terms of the piece that's been conceived via this brand, because fundamentally the brand's, um, uh, the brand's creator is very interested in design, and certainly has hit the spot with, this, uh, with this, this new creation. And these watches have a unique display, which is shown via oil and via discs which rotate beneath the, the surface of the crystal. And the Type 5 is in many ways their most, um, their most uh, large and most spectacular of watches, with a 46mm side-to-side -side diameter. However, I feel that it's still a very elegant watch in terms of doing what it needs to do, which is to be a sort of a, a dive watch of sorts, but with a completely new display. And despite the rather unique appearance of this watch, I feel the way that Ressence have approached the, the, the concept of this design is in a very mature way, and with a great deal of care and real attention. Because the watch itself is produced entirely from grade 5 titanium, which as you can see can be polished to a wonderful finish on the, uh, the silver, or indeed the, the bare metal version and provides the perfect uh, corrosion-resistant format for a pseudo-dive watch in this case. Because the watch has been made water-resistant to 100 metres, which is a difficult point bearing in mind that it has no crowns. And the reason for this is that the, the, uh, the case back operates as the crown, with a locking system which allows you to, uh, to set the time or set up the water resistance. And so the case back rotates to wind the watch, but also rotates to set the time, which is displayed rather, uh, rather incredibly on those various discs on the dial. Now, I will talk about the dial and that, um, that oil on the front of it, but the watch itself is powered by an ETA 2824, which is placed in the back half of the watch. Because as you can imagine, the watch needs to be divided down the middle to keep the oil, which is in the front of the watch, away from the movement, which simply couldn't have the, the torque to be able to, um, to, to survive being, uh, being run within oil. And of course that raises a problem, because how does one, one, uh, one connect these two movements without any physical connection? And in this case, they've used magnetism, which allows the, the, the movement and the discs and the dial to be able to communicate. Of course, the front of the watch really does draw attention, except the bezel, which appears to, uh, to almost disappear into the rest of the case in matted, uh, with a matted surface, and of course graduations to the first 15 marks, which of course is what's required to be a dive bezel with a luminescent pip at 12 o'clock. However, it really is the dial that draws the eye, because encased in 37.5mm of oil, the dial appears to be stuck to the bottom of the crystal, and of course it has a domed sapphire crystal which allows you to have a phenomenal view of the dial at any angle as a result of the oil fill. And the reason for that is that it changes the refractive, the refractive index of the crystal itself, and as a result allows the, the, uh, the dial to appear stuck to it, which creates an, an eerie but extremely legible design, and one which I could very very quickly become accustomed to. But the dial itself in terms of its operation is quite peculiar, because whilst it's controlled by a very intricate set of gears, it has a complete rotation to its design, 
because as you can see, the, the minute hand protrudes from the centre of the dial and runs around the edge of it along those graduations. However, the rest of the dial rotates with the minute hand, so you see the second hand on that, uh, that small subdial, which whilst remaining com completely perfectly upright, does rotate once an hour, as does the, the hour counter, which also remains upright, but does still rotate around the dial with that um, minimalistic Panerai style, with 3, 6 and 9, and of course the Ressence logo at, um, at its top. A curious touch is of course that subdial on the dial, which shows the, the, to the temperature as a result of its, uh, its use as a thermometer, which is of course um, courtesy of the fact the front of the watch is full of oil. And so I feel it would be fair to say that this watch really does have a unique display, and especially the fact that this, this uh, Type 5 is attempting to fill the role of a dive watch, and so has full luminescence of the indices on the dial, with a glorious bicolour tone which gives an incredible space-age style to this watch, which I don't think I've seen anywhere else. And of course the price of this watch is certainly elevated at uh, 28,500 Swiss francs, because of the amount of technology that has to go into it, and the general care, but I think it certainly deserves a place on the market, because it's a fascinating piece in terms of showing something truly new and something truly different, which sets itself apart from all the other alternatives on the market and the other options which other brands offer where, where new designs and, and new displays are concerned. With all these features though, the Ressence is rather a thick watch, at 15.5mm in thickness. And staggeringly, this next watch is almost five times thinner, because this is the Bulgari Octo Finissimo Tourbillon Automatic which holds three, uh, three records at the moment, being the, the world's uh, slimmest tourbillon watch, the world's slimmest automatic watch, and the world's slimmest automatic tourbillon. Now to give you some numbers to really justify that claim, the watch is, despite being 42mm in diameter, only 3.95mm thick. And to put that into context, the movement of this watch is only 1.95mm thick. And that really is a baffling number. It's thinner than a coin, bearing in mind the fact that this watch has a, uh, a full, fully functioning automatic movement with that a very classical um, complication of a tourbillon. And of course the tourbillon was originally conceived to help pocket watches which didn't move very much to, um, to be more, more accurate as a result of moving the escapement. Of course in a modern watch this purpose is somewhat lost, but nonetheless their beauty and their complexity is a wonderful thing to see and especially in this flying tourbillon setup. But before I speak exclusively about the, the movement of this watch, I'd like to give some time to the other uh, case because it really is a beautiful watch. It features a titanium case which is sandblasted to give this wonderful matted look, and of course follows the lines of their Octo Finissimo line with these, um, these sharp edges, those lugs which appear to jump from the edge of the case, and a bracelet which appears fully integrated, though of course you can have a strap alternatively. And this appears like a play on an old Genta design, with a beautiful, uh, beautiful matching titanium bracelet, and then that bezel which encompasses the dial with its octagonal form placed underneath the crystal, which is an incredible addition and is surprisingly powerful despite being something rather subtle with Bulgari on the crystal at the 12 o'clock position. One also has a crown which is suitably small bearing in mind the thickness of the watch, and a pusher which has a purpose which I'll explain. On the back of the watch one sees a very small window into the movement, which otherwise um, doesn't show the rest of the, the movement itself, because it simply would be too unstable if they had a full exhibition case back, due to just how slim the case is. But of course the all-consuming factor of this watch is that movement seen through the skeletonized dial. Because of course when one gets to watches that are this slim, one can't afford to have the thickness of a dial added on. And this is why all of the, the ultra-slim watches one sees now competing for the top, such as the Piaget Altiplano, in the, the Ultimate Concept guys, for example, which has no dial at all, one sees a, 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 a trend of having these skeletonized forms. But of course this is a beautiful movement in terms of showing something truly technical, but modern in its approach. And one has to remember this, this movement may, uh, may, be the, um, may, may be only 1.95mm thin, but the BVL-288, which is the name of the movement, still has a 55 hour power reserve, and still runs at 3 hertz for that rate, and so still is, is a very competent movement, and one which is certainly competitive with other things on the market, irrespective of how slender it is, and the fact that it has a whacking great tourbillon on it. Now somewhat ironically, and indeed somewhat unfortunately for the 50 people who own these watches, the rotor around this watch can't be seen from the front, and of course can't be seen through the back, clearly, as a result of the fact there's no large window. And so looking at the movement outside the watch itself, one can appreciate the fact that this rotor is a peripheral rotor, 
So it runs around the edge of the movement itself and winds it in that way, as, as opposed to having a central rotor or a micro rotor. And what this means is that it's split into two halves, with the one half being aluminium and the other white gold. And this gives a sufficient difference in, uh, in weight as a result of their densities to be able to rotate around the watch without trouble. And this is why one needs that pusher next to the crown, because the crown stem runs on the same plane as that, uh, that, that rotor, and so one has to be able to press this pusher to prevent them from interfering with each other and preventing you from, from uh, setting the time. And whilst the price for this limited edition of 50 is eye-watering at 118,000 US dollars, the watch itself is an incredible demonstration of what can be achieved when, uh, when all the rules in terms of how to produce a watch in this way are really thrown out of the window and they simply produce a watch to be as slim as they possibly can make it. And of course, breaking three records in the process is, uh, is, is no mean feat, making this watch a really interesting piece and quite a remarkable high luxury model. In my eyes, this final watch in the video, the Zenith Defy Lab, is probably the most important, because this watch was designed to, uh, to produce a, a modern version of one of the technologies which is never questioned in the watch industry, and that's the balance wheel and the escapement. Now, the escapement works by locking and unlocking, and by so doing allows the, the watch to, to keep time by releasing the energy um, of the spring gradually and allowing the hands to run at the right speed. And this is allowed by, in most watches through the use of a balance wheel. And the balance wheel oscillates backwards and forwards and allows the escapement to unlock and unlock. And this was designed in the late 17th century by Christian Huygens, and uh, indeed usually oscillates about 300 degrees, in the, in the case of the vast majority of watches, with some watches running at, uh, at um, a lower um, amplitude, but nonetheless uh, a significant number of degrees, and well over 200 in, uh, in the case of the vast majority of healthy movements. However, with this watch, Zenith have used uh, a new movement and did new technologies, in the form of the Calibre Z0342, and they've used a slice of silicon, which has been cut into a particular form, which allows it to oscillate only about 6 degrees, but by so doing creates an incredibly accurate watch, but one which also is very, very reliable and runs an incredibly high beat rate. And essentially this works by anchoring this piece of silicon at its centre to the middle of the automatic movement which the watch is, is already running. However, around its edge there are three separate parts which are each attached to the centre via these, um, these individual blades or levers of silicon. And so this means that you have an extremely reliable elasticity of the silicon itself without a separate spring. And so what happens is that these, um, these external three parts, which together form a circle, oscillate backwards and forwards, but due to their large size of 30, uh, 30 millimeters in diameter, this only has to oscillate 6 degrees in order to, uh, to create the same effect as a normal balance wheel. And this also features the teeth necessary to lock and unlock the, um, the, the, the escape wheel, which is also mounted within the circle of this larger silicon piece. Now, for more information, I have actually produced a full video on this, so if you'd like to understand this um, in greater detail or simply hear a bit more, then uh, do follow the link um, just at the top of the video now. But essentially what this means is that you have a movement with an immensely high accuracy. And the accuracy they were able to get from this watch, rather bafflingly, was this watch was able to run at 0.5 seconds per 48 hours, which is absolutely unprecedented. And to make this even more incredible, because this watch only oscillates those 6 degrees and doesn't uh, cover a much larger distance, it can oscillate much, much more quickly. And so on a normal mechanical watch, you'll see between 18,000 vibrations per hour and about 28,800 vibrations per hour. You do also see some high beat movements with 36,000 vibrations per hour, but generally it's kept at these, um, these lower speeds, which equate to between about 4 and 8 ticks per second, giving a relatively smooth but still noticeable judder to the second hand. By contrast, this movement runs to 108,000 vibrations per hour, which is equivalent to 30 ticks per second, which simply can't be perceived by the human eye, and creates an incredible effect which, um, aside from the, the humming this watch makes due to that high oscillation, creates a really rather remarkable look to a watch, especially one with a case as incredible as this one. And the reason why I mention the case of this watch is because despite sharing the proportions of their, their general Defy line, with a 44mm diameter and a 14.5mm thickness, it's the material that's incredible. Because this watch is housed in a, a new material called Aeronith, and Aeronith is effectively bubbled aluminium, 
So it features these porous, um, porous holes in it, you could say. And so this means that it's 2.7 times lighter than titanium, and still 1.7 times lighter than solid to solid aluminium. It's even 10% lighter than carbon fibre, in fact. And so was launched with this watch because I think it rather matches the, um, the movement in terms of its innovation extremely well. And so as a single unit, it really is indisputable. that This is a remarkable watch with its incredible new version of the balance wheel, which really does push the edge of the envelope in terms of creating something really new. And I think in a world of, of watches, where watches are now really pieces which aren't necessarily used for their timekeeping abilities, but rather more for their, uh, their aesthetic and their mechanical uh, interest, I think this is very important to have these innovations and this care taken by a manufacturer to produce something truly new. And so I'll conclude the video here, but do tell me in the comments down below which of these watches was your favourite, and if there's anything you think I left out which, uh, which I should have included, because I'm always interested to learn a bit more, or to hear what you think of these things. And so thank you very much for watching, if you did enjoy the video then please do like, share and subscribe to help the channel, and also to be able to enjoy more content here in the future. And so thank you very much for watching, this is Arm on the Watch Guy, out.